Good morning. Me, again, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter, right? Um, hopefully not a boring t-shirt. Um, I just pulled this one out of a drawer, so it's not like I've got some magical drawer of fancy t-shirts. So, uh, a couple of my friends noticed yesterday that I seemed a bit off in my videos. Well, you're right, I was. Probably still a bit today. Um, don't worry, I've uh, called the EAP hotline. I've got a name and a number uh, as soon as Monday rolls around, because I believe today is Saturday. Um, I'll give that person a ring and we'll set that up. So, today's video is <clears throat> going to be called Post-Stroke Depression and You. Right? Don't know if I have post-stroke depression, if it's possible. Um, so once you've had your stroke, you're going to have a sense of isolation at times. And I was kind of there yesterday, big time. Um, isolation for a couple of reasons. One, you've had a stroke. Um, not that normal, you know. Um, two, you're still trying to resolve your pre-stroke world to your post-stroke world, right? Those, One of these things is not like the other, right? Um, when I teach at work and I teach the customer service side, um, I always have my employees that I'm teaching write this statement down. Expectation is, or sorry, frustration is when expectation and reality don't collide well, right? So you expect this, you, reality gives you that, you have frustration, right? So... There's a lot of frustration with a stroke because, you know, I've got a lot of expectations and unfortunately reality and expectation doesn't collide well. So, yeah, there's a bit of frustration. Uh, there's a bit of sense of isolation. I'm single. I live alone, right? Uh, I don't have children, um, right? My friends, they have adult responsibilities with adult jobs, so they have to go to work. It's not like we're hanging out all day long just, you know, drinking coffee or whatever. Um, and then uh, I've done some research for my area. I can't seem to find a post-stroke support group that is not meant for people that either A, have blue hair dye, B, do not have their own teeth, C, are ready to play shuffleboard for, or canasta or maybe bridge for hours in a row, um, and possibly need a cane. Um, I actually might need a cane maybe for some days, but no blue hair dye. Look, have my own teeth. Right. They don't come out. Um, I can't stand shuffleboard. I don't know how to play canasta, and I've only ever played bridge twice. Um, more of a euchre or a pepper fan. Um, for those who don't know what pepper is, it's kind of like Newfie euchre. Um, you know, so I'm not recently retired. God, I hope not. Um, so... It's, it's a bit difficult finding things for me to do during the day out in the world <clears throat> with people, right? Um, I can be around people, yes. Uh, it's difficult to find things to do with people, right? <clears throat> Fun fact. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, Yesterday was difficult, I'll be quite honest. <clears throat> a friend of mine, uh, Richard, and his two-year-old Connor came by. We went out to some shopping and whatnot, hung out for a while. That was great, thank you. Um, kind of needed that. You asked me if I was doing okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing okay. Was I okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anything you could have done about it yesterday? No. I was just trapped in my head, right? Um, it, it's just one of those things, right? It's, it's a post-stroke thing. Uh, yesterday was a bit of a rough day, I'll be quite honest. Are there going to be more rough days? Yeah, there could be. So, you're going to have a sense of isolation. <clears throat> uh, because, one, you are going to be isolated uh, from people, right? Uh, physically and mentally, maybe a bit emotionally, right? Emotionally, this is a roller coaster, right? Um... You are going to have crying or laughing fits when you don't need to be laughing or crying. Or they're going to be unexpected and just, poof, it's happening. Um, or you might laugh at sad things, cry at happy things, right? Um, so, 
there could be some of that, right? Also, you know, you're still picking through the recovery thing, right? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm still picking through this recovery thing. So there's a lot of potential there to not, you're in uncharted ground, right? This is a map that has yet to be built yet. The cartographers have not got out and, and made their measurements. <clears throat> so there are days where this whole post-stroke thing, not, not so funny. And trust me, I try to find the funny in this any chance I get. Um, you know, I, I couldn't. It, just, it was difficult to find the funny. Um... You, then let's talk about, you know, emotionally, there'll be some isolation. Physically, well, again, we've kind of touched on that before several times in several videos. You know, your friends, they have things to do during the day. It's not like they're going to come over and, you know, occupy and entertain your time. It's just not a reality. Just not a reality, right? Um, you are then going to have to deal with the fact that you are going to be alone uh, for good chunks of time and you're going to, have to find something to occupy your time like you are going to have to find something to do um, if you don't you are going to get real bored real quick right <clears throat> and then you know with that physical kind of <clears throat> isolation does come the social isolation because again you're alone right you, so there's a lot of reasons why you'll have a sense of isolation and they're all realistic and they're all going to happen uh, both through the research I've done on the internet um, and through my own experience. And then the user's manual for the brain that tried to kill you, also known as your stroke book, um, you know, it also mentions that you're going to have a sense of isolation. You're going to have to find creative ways to get around that. Because <clears throat> if you don't, um, about a third of all stroke survivors... Right, or in my case, assaulters, um, will have to deal with post-stroke depression, right? PSD, post-stroke depression. <clears throat> and it's just the thing, right? Which third will you be in? You're never going to know until it happens. Um, and that's why I'd advocate anyone that's had a stroke, definitely you're going to go and need to seek some counseling, right? Uh, just proactively. Do I have post-stroke depression? I doubt it, right? Um, having had depression before, I know what depression feels like, so I don't think that that is going to be this, right? Um, you know, I, I just don't think that's that's this, right? Uh, so, counseling will definitely help put your head back right, <clears throat> or at least make sure it is on right, because we know your brain's not, because it tried to kill you. Um... For the friends, family members, caregivers of those that have had a stroke, <clears throat> some stroke people will have a sense of apathy where they're just quite content to stare at the wall all day long. That is not depression. That is just a case of a fuck it, right? There are small population in the stroke community that have a case of the permanent fuck it's. They're not depressed, they just have apathy. Those persons, you need to activate them. Don't let them have the fuckets, because the fuckets will turn into the depression, right, eventually. Um, so there are there is a small amount of the stroke community that will appear to be suffering from a form of depression, uh, where they're just quite content to stare at the wall all day long. Um, that's more of an apathy. Uh, activate them. Get them to do something. You know, uh, they may be resistant to activation, but you got to get them up and doing something because if they remain in that, you know, catatonic like state, eventually that will lead to something significantly worse. Um, the best I can suggest, if you've had a stroke, and, and I try to do this every day <clears throat> as possible. Get out in the world and do something. Go down to the library, go down to the beach, go down to the mall, go down, do whatever, right? You've, you've got to get out of the house and get activated because if you don't, you know, you're looking at the same set of walls all day long and <clears throat> there's only so much you're going to be able to do at home. Um, 
try to be as pre-stroke as possible, right? Try to involve yourself uh, in the exact same activities with the exact same friends. You know what? <clears throat> Last weekend on the Friday night, Saturday night, and the Sunday, those were probably the three most normal days I've had since my stroke. Friday night, I was out with friends uh, for a birthday party at a local drinking establishment. Saturday night, was over to friends for a team kind of potluck social event. And then the Sunday, I went out shooting with my friends. Uh, that, in eight, eight weeks at that point since my stroke, that was the most normal, right, I've had feeling in a long time. Uh, was I able to do everything the way I thought I'd be able to? No. No. Right? So, but it felt normal, right? It, it, it was the most normal. So you're going to have these moments where you feel normal. I don't feel normal. Uh, right? It's, it's going to do that. So where are you going to land on a day in day out basis? Depends on the day, depends on the time of day. Many things can change, right? So if you've had a stroke, right? Just be mindful that a sense of isolation will be finding you eventually, right? Um, for those of you that are still post-recovery and you're in some healthcare facility, like you're still in the hospital and you've been there for a good while, you're in a rehab uh, uh, recovery facility, right? And you're going to be there for a couple of months. I can only imagine the sense of isolation you're going to have because you're going to be in a room filled with people, but you're still going to feel isolated because your life is not in that building. Your existence right now is in that building, and you're muddling through what these people make you do to, to get home. <clears throat> Me, I'm at home. Right? I get the advantage of sleeping in my own bed. I get the advantage of making my own meals, because thank God hospital food sucks. Right? When you ask the internet, would you prefer MREs or hospital food? And I tell the internet, hey, does anyone got any late 80s, early 90s, original heavy black bag MRE? Bring them on down. I'll happily take three. Right? And if you happen to have ham and chicken loaf preformed and chunked, that was my favorite because it's disgusting. <laughs> or if you happen to have the Canadian IMP, the original 1980-1990 ham lung, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, I could I would have killed for a ham lung, right? Yeah, just coat it in ketchup, drain out the brine. Yummy, yummy. Right? Um, you know. Uh, so hospital food sucks you're not in your own bed so even in your own home you're going to get a sense of isolation right that's just a reality nothing you can do about it either right legitimately not a thing you can do it's going to find you eventually right this is a very surreal experience um and you're going to get the stroke book right also known as the manual for the brain that tried to kill you um, you're going to get one of those and it's going to give you generalities and outlines and vagaries and you know, st statistics, and you can do the research on the internet, and it'll give you even better statistics and research papers and tell you about this, that, and the other thing. But because a stroke is so unique to the individual, uh, because a stroke is so unique to each individual circumstance, um, the stroke will be unique to you in many ways. So when, how, where this sense of isolation hits you, it, it's going to find you, right? Just be prepared. It, it's a thing, right? Um, now, if that sense of isolation is longer than a day, day and a half, two days, right? Um, you need to reach out for help, right? Uh, me, I luckily have uh, uh, an employee assistance program through my employer. I'm going to start out with that. Um, if, and this goes to all my friends and family, <clears throat> if you're happy watching this, you're like, oh my God, panic, no, no, no need to speed wobble. Um, if things got dark, dreary, and bad, definitely I'd be right down to emerge and checking myself in, right, and let them do what they need to do, but that's not where we're at right now. Um, you know. So... That's basically today's video is post-stroke isolation or isolationism in the post-stroke era. Hmm. Nah, it sounds too much like a history course. I'm not going to do that. So anyways, if you happen to see anything you like, enjoyed over the last nine weeks, please like, share, subscribe with your friends, make comments, get to see some comments. Good, good news. 
Yes, there will be a test eventually. Um, that's okay, I had a stroke. I'll probably forget about making one. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, slurring, stuttering of speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.